let's see, Grave, how to find accurate market value using what I think is a fair dollars but can't get past the recruiter or ATS. Uh, try not to give a number, but when have to, they're insistent. Okay. So I'm going to give you a really simple one here. Don't you try to figure all that out, okay? You you don't know what's fair. So so 40,000 increase, 60,000 increase, double your pay, 47 increase, you know, from, from somebody who mentioned it today, right? Like, you have no idea what the number is. You just don't, okay? So don't try racking your brain. Okay. Let's, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I wanna say this, Grave. This is, I'm glad that you kind of tipped me over here. I haven't said this to you guys in a long time. This is a really great question. It really is, because you just don't know what market value is, which is why I tell you there is no such thing as market pay. There isn't. Any organization that claims that they know what a fair market pay is for this project manager or that architect or that technologist is clueless. They, they don't know. It, how could they possibly know? Here's what happens. They know what they're paying their people. They might have even paid money to the Kennedy Group or some other company that goes out and surveys people or looked at Glassdoor to come up with some number that they should be paying. And what's wrong with doing that? Number one, that group, that company, that survey, that online, whatever, is pulling data from ago, ago. 10 minutes ago, 10 months ago, or whenever, but it's ago, right? That's in the past, and that's trailing, and that is not an indication of what I need to pay to get somebody in my seat today. I got to pull somebody from somewhere else, or... Right, I got to entice them enough. Well, I have to pay her 47% more. I have to pay him $40,000 more. No, no survey is going to tell you that. Okay, so then it comes down to hand to hand combat at a moment in time. Right now, you're asking me, Well, Andy, how do I know where to start? You don't, which is why you don't give them a number. What do you do when you get into an interview process? You keep asking questions so you can keep getting more information so that before you open your mouth and stick your foot in it, you have more information to know not to stick your foot in your mouth. Okay, so then they say, well, hang on a second. And you're gonna say, Andy, they're forcing me to tell them. Then you say, I don't know. Pick a number for me. Tell me what your budget is. Give me whatever. You start, you go first. If you're insistent that I give you a number, then you must have some number in mind so you can check your little box so that I can fit into it, right? What's your budget? Give me that number. And then you just accept it at that moment in time because the fight hasn't started, okay? At this moment, paying any attention to what they tell you is gonna do one of a couple things to you. It's gonna throw you off your game because you're all bummed out because you think you deserve 50,000 more, okay? Right? Or you're gonna lock in mentally, it's called price anchoring, but it's a similar analogy, but that's what we do as buyers. And we think they're only gonna pay me $60,000. So now you go through the whole process and you're not on your game. Instead of, instead of one of two things is always present at the time somebody is speaking in the beginning of the process about what the salary is gonna be. If the company says it's $60,000, that's what we wanna pay, or it's between 50 and 70 or whatever. That's what they think they wanna pay at that moment in time for who they think should fulfill those duties. That's how that's determined. It's based on history, not projection. Except you're working when? In the future, not in the past. Okay. That's what they think. What are you going to do about it? You're going to take what they tell you and you're going to realize that if that's not enough money for you or that's not acceptable or you're not comfortable earning that amount of money for what you're going to contribute, you get the whole interviewing process to do what? Change their mind about the value of that position, who they think can solve, what problems they have or the challenges that they need to overcome, and the value they're going to realize based on what you've shown them you can do or will do. So I think somebody with this level of skills, who's got about this many years of experience, who I've generally seen do these things, earns about 60 grand a year to do that, and that's how I value the position. Okay, now you need to show them 
that you have more expertise and with that expertise can make more things happen than what they expect. You, you, you want me to do this, but I can actually do this. Okay, so now for this, because I'm gonna prove to you that I can do this, this is more valuable. Okay, this is more valuable, which means I should get paid more. Now, you don't say it that way, but you're going to show them, well, I'm going to be able to contribute. I'm going to be able to do. Wait, it doesn't need to be this. Guess what? It can be this, and you could get paid more. Why? Because I don't, I don't need to take eight hours to do that job. I can do that job in one hour. What do you want me to do with the other seven? Right? This is the stuff that goes on in the interviewing process. But a lot of you quit immediately because you're worried about what number you're giving them or what number they gave you. That's not the fight. That just throws you off your game. The fight's way down at the end. And it's not when they give you the offer. It's when you go back to them and explain to them why you're worth more. I mean, this drives me nuts that people do this. You leave money on the table. You leave jobs on the table because you quit. Because of something you heard or something you believed or something that they believed, but they're not the ones deciding what you get paid. No recruiter's deciding that. No HR person unless you're joining their team. Right, so when going back to grave situation, don't give them a number. And if, if all they need is a, an agreement to a number, they don't need your number, they need at a minimum an agreement to, to their number. And you just agree up front. And then you're gonna say, well Andy, when I get all the way down to the end, well, I told them that that was okay, now what? That's right, you did tell them that was okay and you gave them an answer because they pressed you and you gave them an answer based on what you knew at the time. And guess what? You know a lot more now, right? Well, we live in a whole new world than we did three weeks ago, right? I met seven people. None of them on the team can do what I can do and you wanted me to do this and I'm gonna show you I can do that. What's that worth to you, okay? Yeah, that was a $60,000 a year job. This is an $80,000 a year job. And you have to make some argument that, that, that you are worth that. And if you don't want to stay there and fight, fight through the interviewing process to prove that, I'm okay with that. But I'm telling you that you don't need to just take what they tell you it's, they, they want to pay. You need to decide, do I want to work here badly enough? Am I going to put in the effort to go through this process to prove to them that I'm worth way more? That's what, that's what you do. It's not because you just want 80. It's because you're worth it. So you need to make the case. A lot of this stuff and a lot of the interaction of how to do this is probably the single greatest thing that I spend time on in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with people is helping them figure this out, how to make the argument, what exactly to say, and when the employer says something, you say this if they say that. If they say this, you say this. We go through all this, and it's really hard to do in general, but the point is that you have to recognize that these things are malleable. They might not be at the moment in time because that recruiter needs to check a box. You get days, weeks, or months to change their mind. They always have, just recap this, they always have two issues. One, here's what I think I wanna pay for the problems that I need to solve. And here's who I think can solve it. You get the interview process to turn both of those things on their head. It's, I know you thought this was the person to solve it, but I'm the person to solve it, and I am far more equipped. And I'll tell you one last thing, and I know I'm really rolling on here, but once they see you, they can't unsee you. You can reset their mind about what that position should be worth. Okay, this, is, this happens every day for somebody who's willing to take the time to do that. But if you say, well, no, that job just pays this and that's what they told me, well, then you're just, you're living in the world that, that God gave you instead of creating the world that you want. Boy, did I roll off on that. But you know what? I, I just, I needed to, I needed to let, you know what? I needed to let that one go. So grave 79, you don't need to give a number. All right.